Good morning. If you're not ready to tackle a border, don't worry. You can jump ahead to episode 10. But if you are staying, I can't wait to show you how finished this is going to make your gourd look. This project is equally pleasing with or without the border panels, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you the reasons why I really like putting the panels all the way around. For one thing, instead of just having a image on one side of the gourd, you have images all the way around. Also, if someone is placing this somewhere where it will be reflected like a mirror or a window, you have something to look at on the other side or from outdoors. Another reason is because you can actually camouflage small irregularities in your gourd. It adds value. It also helps carry the theme all the way around the entire object instead of just one smaller piece on the front. So it makes it look more like a whole intentional project and you have more than one focal point. Those are the reasons why I love putting in a border. So here we go. We're about to put in a border. Optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, next, if you want to do a pattern around the back, which you definitely don't have to do, but if you just want to do, and you can use anything. I mean, if you've got a glass, you can use a glass and roll something around. But I am going to figure that I want something right about in here and right around in here and I just want a big swap all the way around the back because this is such a big pretty gourd that I want to really show it off. This one's hard to keep steady. It keeps wanting to rock. I want it flat like that so I might have to kind of fold it <laughs> suddenly it's easier. Well, you couldn't see any of that. It actually ended up being easier to move the pencil than it was to move the cord. I just held the cord in place and moved the pencil like this. Nobody said you can't do it like this, right? Now I want a spot about like that, right about there. So that'll come in there and there, kind of a little bit more than thirds, but a little bit more than thirds, but closer to the top. All right, now we're ready for the next one. I'm going to go a little lower. And this is going to be so much fun. I love all the wood burning. bring the top one down just about an inch. I don't know. No, I like it. I like it where it is. And this one. I like that one where it is. And this one. To get the distance on this band, I use the close band. So I can do the same here. I should probably do it once I wood burn the first one, but. This is not a curve, so I think I can be pretty steady.
finding it easier to bring it toward me so that I can see the line. That is one yapping dog. Okay, I'm back. And today, my plan is, I went ahead last night and I burned the double rings all the way around. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to put in, if there are any more accents that we want in here, any grasses, if we want any cattails, anything like that. And what I'm going to do is, and if you're doing a scene on the back, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put some cattails, and then once we put the cattails, then we will alternate with kind of like the snaky grass. And I will tell you to do the cattails. We're going to want to turn this upside down, and we're going to start the first line from the bottom, and they can go this away and that away. But we want to start from here because a lot of times if you're burning down toward a line, you actually will accidentally cross it over. Like when I started here, I always start from here and come down, here and come down. And so I'm going all the way around, but then when I get about to here, I'll stop about here and flip it over and start here and come down. You always want to work away from where you need to stop because it's just too difficult to see if you're holding the burner like this, it's too hard to tell at what point it's going to exactly reach it and possibly cross it. The other line. So that is the plan. So here we go. I'm going to think about what size cattails I want, kind of about like that. If you're not really sure what cattails should look like, just open up your computer or phone and look at a picture of cattails and see they kind of look like a hot dog on a stick. The tough part is going to be, of course, the more of them that we have, the more that we're going to carve around. So if you don't want to do too much carving, don't put too many small details like that in. But if you're okay with carving and you like it, then put lots of details because it's going to be a really, really striking border all the way around. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. For some reason, when I put a border all the way around, it ends up reminding me of Roseville Pottery. I'm not really sure why. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll leave links to everything I've used below, and I'll see you in the next one where we're actually going to finish up this border. Bye!